You know, we've been talking about the drama and the the tripping and the obstacles and the feet flopping of the DC universe right now. We still got another movie to go. We got a few movies to come. But one of the ones that has been pretty interesting has been the Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle in and of itself was not a character that I ever thought you could actually do in a live action series. I, I never really thought you could do that one. What was the name of the one anime? It wasn't, maybe it was Guyver. Was it Guyver? Then Mark Hamill starred in a live action version of it back in the 80s. I think it was Guyver. But anyway, when I look at Blue Beetle, I kind of see it. Help me out in the live chat, guys. Let me know if that was Guyver. I think it was. But uh, Guillaume Labelle is saying, yes, it was Guyver. There you go. So the Blue Beetles always struck me a little bit like a Guyver kind of character and not really sure if that would work. But I got really fascinated when the whole story evolved that this Blue Beetle movie, which was originally being designed to be a straight to dumping on streaming on HBO Max movie, that the studio looked at and said, you know what? This is actually pretty good. This should go to theaters. Essentially kind of the opposite experience of what Batwoman had, unfortunately, but, or Batgirl, I should say, had, unfortunately. And ever since that happened, and then you got this kid, Zolo, I think is his name, the kid from uh, Cobra Kai uh, starring in it. And I have been very, very interested in seeing what the hell is this going to feel like? Because while I've been really intrigued by it, the fact that they've decided to make it a theatrical release, all that kind of, that's all good. But got Susan Sarandon on board. That's good. Playing a chord. The chords who have also been traditionally Blue Beetle, but he's, he's Blue Beetle. This one's going to be Jaime Reyes. I have not really known what this is going to feel like. So when the trailer dropped this morning, I was like holding my breath a little bit. I was like, okay, kind of please be good. Please be good. Damn it. I liked it. I, I liked it. Now, look, nothing too far off the beaten path of, of the superhero origin, superhero trope kind of thing. Not, nothing, nothing supremely original happening here, at least not in the trailer. Granted. But it charmed me. I watched, I was laughing. I was smiling. I was grinning through it. I thought the visual, because how's the scarab going to look? Like once it's, it's on him and all that kind of stuff. I thought visually it looked pretty good. A little Iron Man-ish, granted, but I don't think that was avoidable. So I'll tell you what, I don't know if this is going to be any good. And if Blue Beetle is destined to be the disappointment at the box office that both Shazam was and obviously uh, Black Adam as well, I, I don't know what's going to happen to this movie. And I don't know if it's going to be good or not. But just based on that trailer... I got to tell you, I am far more excited about seeing this movie now than I was 24 hours ago. I, I thought it looked great. Chris, you had a chance to check out the trailer for this. What did you think about it? It is surprisingly awesome. That transformation into the suit is gnarly. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Jaime Reyes is such a fun character, too. And obviously, Ted Kord, um, who was the Blue Beetle before him, is really, really fun. But what's cool, I think, too, and this... I feel like the move to this, to the big screen, also kind of plays into what, what James Gunn wants to do. And that's making the comics and the movies have a more synergistic feel to them. Um, her character, Susan Sarandon's character, Victoria Cord, was introduced recently in, I think it's graduation day number two. So they're starting to bring these characters from the movies into the comics, so there's all, all that happening. But this looks really, really fun. I honestly, while watching it, kind of got Ms. Marvel vibes because I feel like we're going to have a really fun, tight-knit family unit. I already That's, love the family right? dynamic. Right? They're so fun. I love who I, I assume is maybe the little sister character and then his dad character, George Lopez. I think this is going to be really, really cool. I love them. They seem like they're going to have such a fun dynamic. I love the idea of his family also already knowing about this. I think it's really interesting when we have a hero who doesn't have to hide their secret identity from their family and they're already involved and they already get to have their say in what's going on. So I think this is going to be really, really cool. And again, I'm just really happy with that transformation sequence. It looked horrific. Yeah. And I think that's great because if this is the alien tech that I hope it is, I really, really want them to play into all of the Scarab kind of lore and have that be something that happens down the line because that's one of my favorite things that they did in the Young Justice uh, animated series. I love, love, love what they did with the Scarab. So I hope they do more of that. A couple of really great lines I loved in it too. Just the, the narration going over it where the one girl's voice saying, it sometimes will do what you want it to do and sometimes it won't. I also really love Sarandon's one line. 
it chose you, but it belongs to me. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you this question. So I, I know a lot of people, when they announced that they were going to do Blue Beetle, and they announced it was going to be Jaime Riaz's version of it. Now, more traditionally, it's been Ted Cord. Yeah. Do you think maybe one of the reasons they decided to make the standalone movie with Jaime Riaz was because a lot of people have talked for a long time, those who enjoy the comics, about wanting to see a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle team up. Mm -hmm. The Blue Beetle that teams up with Booster Gold is Ted Cord. Yes. Do you think maybe they went the direction with... Jaime Riaz as the standalone Blue Beetle to maybe leave a door open for a Ted Cord Blue Beetle and Booster Gold down the road? Or do you think really has nothing to do with each other? I mean, I would love that. I would love that. I have those Funko sets. I love them so much <laughs> together. And I still want it to be Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyuk together. I think it'd be so perfect to have them do their little buddy romp. I think it'd be great. But I also think you, we kind of associate that version of Blue Beetle too as a, as a goofier one. Right. It's a yes. little lighter fare because of his dynamic with Booster Gold and the wacky shenanigans that they get into. So I feel like by pushing that off to the side, you absolutely leave room for them. There can be more than one Blue Beetle. We've had a bajillion Spider-Man. We have so many things going on. Right. We've had all the Batman. But I think this allows you to do a bit more serious character with Jaime. And also you have a bit more longevity, too. He's a younger character. And I know that's something that they've been talking about, too, moving forward, is you want to have some people who can do several movies. Ted's an older character who I think can be around and exist and do stuff. But maybe that's something we revisit later on in a different phase of DC. Let me ask you this, too. I mentioned this looks good. I'm intrigued by it. I think it's a solid first trailer. But how well can it actually do? Because this, this movie has a couple of obstacles. I'm not going to say strikes. This Blue Beetle movie has a couple of obstacles in front of it. Number one, a sorely lagging DC universe right now that apparently the movie going audience doesn't have much interest in. So there's that. On top of that, you have a character that most of the general movie going audience has never heard of. Now, granted, same was true of Guardians of the Galaxy, and that thing was a giant hit. But Guardians of the Galaxy came out in an MCU that was really successful and was and was doing great things and and happening. That Blue Beetle doesn't have that enjoyment of that of a health of a currently healthy and thriving DC universe, right? So there's that too. Number three, if you don't watch uh, Cobra Kai. There, there's no real, I mean, yes, you got legends like uh, Susan Sarandon and the like, but but nobody who is like a marquee star right now. Mm -hmm. So it's got that going. Let me ask you this, honestly. Can this movie make $400 million? Because I'll tell you right now, I almost feel like we had Shazam 2, which was really good in my opinion. I really quite liked it. And it couldn't make bus fare. Can Blue Beetle cross like the four can it do what shazam one and two and what black adam failed to do because i'm not i don't know that it can regardless of how good it is what do you think you know i do think there's the potential for it according to the motion picture association back in 2020 hispanics made up about 30 percent of the box office wow. but they have been wildly underrepresented on screen and here you have a latino lead and I think that is something that could be really, really in favor of DC right now is having this representation on screen and having that demographic come out to the box office. You know, there's also a reason why we've talked about this with Bad Bunny's casting in Marvel and everything. Huge megastar who is one of the top selling artists because of this demographic and everything. So I think if you look at that and you look about how that makes up such a large chunk of our box office and isn't necessarily shown on screen in the way that it should be. I think this really, really could have some big numbers. By the way, a little bit of a callback there. Bad Bunny, of course, featured prominently in WrestleMania yes. night yeah. one. Making yes. sure things went down yeah. That's right. taking or, that chance. Where was away? he in the Roman Reigns yeah, fight? Exactly. Why? That's what we kept yelling when we were watching. We were like, where's, where's Logan Bad Bunny? Anger Rabbit? So he was like, where's Anger Rabbit? Why you have to leave here? the seats next time, where's I think. Anger Rabbit. <laughs> Do you guys want to grow your hair out like uh, George Lopez in the movie for when we go see this film? Oh my gosh, all of us should. <laughs> I liked his look with the family dynamic they were having. It's so fun. For me, I, I like that he out. didn't look like he just normally does. I like the look he had. I stand by George Lopez's hair wearing decisions. All right, guys, question is for you. 
Did you have a chance to see the trailer for Blue Beetle? If so, what did you think? I'm not going to lie. It looked a lot better to me than I thought it would. Because I've been trying to be optimistic about Blue Beetle, but I've been kind of holding my breath a little bit. I think it looks delightful. I really like the comparison Jonathan made to, uh, to a little bit of Miss Marvel feel to it as well. Guys, whatever you guys think about it, do you think it can be a hit or not? Is it doomed to not be a hit, but hopefully it's good and maybe can open up a franchise? Will James Gunn even want to carry the character over into the new DCU? So many questions. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia